a okay so this is a story about uh me <laughs> being a stripper so my roommate talked me into it i was very uh gullible naive um unfamiliar with the ways of the world um so i had a roommate she was my best friend at the time i wasn't her best friend in any way shape or form she she was just you know i i was oh goodness gracious i was just like a dummy or dodo bird in her head you know what i mean like i was just somebody to use Okay, so let's just call a thing a thing. That's what it was. I was a lame. And so um, before we moved in together, we would hang out a lot. And so at some point, I noticed like she started paying with for everything with $1 bills. You know, like... <laughs> We would go to the store and she would get something and she'd be counting out $56 in ones. You know, <laughs> I'm staying at work. Hey, uh, let's make up a name for her. Coco. Coco, uh, what's up with all the ones? <laughs> and she was like, oh, girl, I dance. And like she had done you know ballet growing up and this kind of dance and that kind of dance and um and you know she was a great dancer her dad owned a nightclub and um always dancing you know like that was one of our big things we would always go out and go dancing so i was like i know you dance you know but wh what's that got to do with the ones she was like no girl not like that stripping i strip i was like stripping really and she was like, yeah. And I was like, that's not scary. And she was like, no, girl. It's the same thing you do when you get out the shower and you run around dancing naked. You know, she was like, you just, I'm just getting paid for it. So she was like, you could strip. <laughs> I was like, clutch my pearls. Me? You think I could do that? Like, somebody would pay money? <laughs> she was like, yeah, girl. So, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. So, I started going with her. Um, she was stripping at several different clubs We in the next city over. Um, so I, I was started going with her to see what it was like. So she, she had glamorized it. She was like, oh yeah, girl, you strip all the way naked, except for your garter belt, but you're high up on the stage and the men are not allowed to touch you except to put money on your garter belt. And there's security, there's bouncers, you know, like if, if anybody makes you feel uncomfortable, he's out of there, you know? And so she made it seem like it was this pretty much risk-free thing that I already dance around naked being silly um, at home by myself, you know, but anyway, or if she was around, I didn't care about that. But, um, you know, she was like, you do it anyway. Why not make some money? I was in college full time and, um, and I always worked full time. I always had a full time job, but at that time I wasn't working for some reason. So, um, I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> But I'm gonna try it. So I go with her and I see what it's like. And what she said was true. Like the stage was, you know, pretty high. It was like uh, four feet up. And then, you know, she's up there, you know. <laughs> and uh, 
and the guys are down in the audience and you know the guys will come up and put a dollar or you know whatever on their guard about because you know sometimes it might be a dollar some other times it might be you know 20s or hundreds or whatever he felt like putting on that guard ring you know the money he would put that on there and then go back and sit down and so it, nobody was groping anybody and all this kind of stuff and the clubs that she danced it like they didn't have like these the the clubs today you know like they have the vip rooms and all it, it, there was none of that maybe maybe it just wasn't like that in the city that we were in but it, it wasn't like that like everything was that was the show and that was it and then girls would come down in their outfits and you know they might sit with guys <clears throat> or you know work the crowd however they chose to but there wasn't any uh serious stuff going on not in the club anyway so i see all this and i'm thinking oh, i think I, I think i could do that i think you know that's free money <laughs> that's, why not and i was young i was young i was like 20 i was 22 I think I was 22 yeah kids do dumb shit so anyway um so I started dancing <laughs> I started dancing and I quickly learned that she left a whole lot of stuff out okay she left a whole lot of things out I started dancing and quickly find out that a lot of these girls are on drugs um bad habits ooh terrible drug habits a lot of the girls were selling themselves outside of the clubs i remember one day or one night we were back in the back in the dressing room and so I'm putting my costume on and there are these other two women in the locker room doing the same thing they're getting ready so this one chick comes in and I mean oh man she's just fly right she had a red Mustang. She had a red bandana. And she was a red bone. And she had her bikini top and her little, you know, short Daisy Duke shorts on. And she looked good. She looked good. Hair was done. Everything was done, you know. Look good, smell good, probably even taste good. <laughs> so, um, she, I'm thinking, damn, you know, she, she killing the game. What's she doing? And um, I listen, I, they're talking, they're not being quiet at all. And uh, the red bone is like, man, I hope my trick come tonight. I don't feel like dancing all night. Clutch my pearls. <laughs> what? You would rather sell your body than just get this free money you ain't you know what I mean like oh I heard that that opened my eyes I was like I'm I'm in the wrong place dude I I'm not I don't think I, I I'm uncomfortable <laughs> Because, you know, guys would always ask me to sell my body or to do a private party. And I was scared of all that stuff. You know, I I heard private party and all I envisioned was a group of men trying to rape me. I was not signing up for that. And uh, what else was it? selling my body oh, that shit that that was just not an option that that was just not an option selling my body are you crazy like that just was not was not what i was there for but then 
I started thinking about it <clears throat> and I was like, okay, it's easy for me to turn down, you know, this money or that money, you know, guys offering you a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, you know, and this, that, and the other. It's easy for me to, you know, say no and keep keep on moving. But like, what if I was in some kind of dire situation where I needed a lot of money real fast? You know, like what if my roommate got locked up or something like that and she needed a bond or or you know, something happened with my family or or something like that. Like would I actually be tempted then? So I was like, ah, this is just not a good environment to be playing with, you know, because it seemed like shit could get real serious, real fast, faster than I was ready for. And I, I just learned real quickly that I, I wasn't about that life. <laughs> I wasn't about that life. And so, um, yeah, right about that time though, God confronted me uh, about um, being gay and I had had a dream. He had given me a dream about the environment that I was putting myself in, stripping. I had a dream that um, I was at the strip club and it was a pit. In the dream, it was a pit. And in that pit, it was full of all these dark, shadowy, um, um, demony types of presences that were in the people there. And that's what I was, I feel like God was showing me that is the spiritual environment that I was putting myself in. You know, cause we all have a spirit. Y'all can sit up there and think that demons aren't real, angels aren't real. You know you have a soul. You know you have a soul. What makes you different from anybody else? We all got two eyes, a mouth, a nose, two ears, a head, two arms, you know. What makes us all individuals? Our spirit, our soul. We have a heart. We got blood vessels, all that kind of stuff. Your brain. How, how many people can grow up in the same household? And ain't none of them joke is the same. Everybody got their own personality. Everybody got their own ways and everything. It's your soul. So you have a spirit that you carry with you everywhere that you go. And there are spiritual beings out there, whether you want to face it or not, whether you like to hear it or not, you know, whether you want to believe it or not. They don't need your belief to exist. So anyway, God showed me that was the spiritual environment that I was putting myself into. And so when he confronted me about being gay, and then I had had that dream too about the stripping and everything, I just, I just gave, gave both, you know, I, I, I gave the stripping up and then, um, he delivered me from homosexuality. I'm talking like you already know this story. This might be the first first video of mine that you've seen. Look, you got you got to go back. <laughs> you got to go back and listen to some of my other stories so you can so you can understand what's going on. I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> I might be giving you too much too fast. Okay, so let me plug my book, uh, my audio book, The Bedroom Secrets of an Ex-Lesbian. I used to be gay years ago. God delivered me from homosexuality. Um, and never had to fight with it. I didn't ask him to deliver me from homosexuality. I wasn't even in church. I was actually stripping. <laughs> I wasn't, I was not trying to get his attention or his approval at the time in my life. Um, but he's a father. So whether you're being good or bad, you're still his kid and he loves you, you know, either way, it's nothing you can do to get away from him loving you. 
<clears throat> you can either accept it or reject it. It's up to you. But his love is there for you. So anyway, he delivered me from homosexuality. And once he did that, I wanted to give something. I wanted to contribute something. You know, like I, what did I learn while I was like, like that? Well, I learned how to make good love to women. Mm -hmm. I used to make sure all my girlfriends had at least 10 orgasms in under an hour. And there were a lot of women that were in that lifestyle just because they couldn't get any satisfaction from men. Did she say that? She said that. <laughs> but it's true. It's true, you know, and they couldn't talk to their man about it and, you know, whatever. So I was like, well, what if I give men those techniques that I learned? You know, they're, it's real basic. It's real easy. These are like the ABCs and the one, two, threes of how to work and twerk a woman's body to make sure she's having multiple orgasms or having orgasms easily, you know? And it's like, once you learn these basic things um, of how to find the clitoris, how to manipulate the clitoris, you know, how to, how to touch it without hurting her, um, how to touch it to make her, to stimulate it, make it all that good stuff. Um, once you learn all that stuff, you know, then, you know, if you become a, a poet in the bedroom, that's on you, you know, it's up to you what you do with it, but at least know the basics. So I give step-by-step -step instructions, um, for that in the bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian and women, uh, also, uh, you may have been intimate for years and you have never had an orgasm. And that is a shame. The bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian will teach you step by step in how to get there. And with your man, make it more fun, you know, give it a little spice. I had, I had um, friends of mine they had been married for 15 years or 15 years and i told them about my book they asked for a copy and they listened to it together they listened to it together and boy she she told me they chasing after each other like teenagers again you know what i mean um so and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that. So um, if that interests you, find the link to uh, my audio book in the description. It's on my Koji page. And um, yeah, have fun with that. Um, okay, so I think that's everything for this video. And this one was too long. I'm trying to make them under 10 minutes. I talk too much. And you still here. I love you. <laughs>